Am F1H2 a World Championship returned to Evian a fourth consecutive year for the 22nd Grand Prix of France, round three of the 2018 season. The world famous spa and holiday destination Evian Le Ben attracts visitors from all over the world, having been a regular hotspot for jet set socialites and royalty through the centuries. Evian was one of the world's premier destinations during the Belle Epoque and the Roaring Twenties, and it continues to be a major attraction with its incredible architecture, the all-wood La Grand Jolac Concert Hall, the Clock Tower, and some of the finest restaurants and cuisine at the foot of the Alps. But Evian's greatest treasure is water. Evian is located at the foot of the mighty snow-capped Alps, where the town and its environs receive the pristine, crystal-clear waters that cascade from the surrounding mountains year-round creating Europe's largest alpine lake, Lac Le Mans, a.k.a. Lake Geneva. There couldn't be a more perfect setting for the world's premier marine motorsport racing series, as crowds gathered on the shores of Lac Le Mans in their thousands to watch the Grand Prix of France, a historic 275th UIM F1H2O Grand Prix. Those with the nerve and the stomach for it tried the F1H2 two-seater, where they got a first-hand experience of the hair-raising thrill that is F1H2 racing. Now let's take a look back at what happened in round two at the Grand Prix of London. F1H2O Grand Prix in the UK in 33 years drew British crowds in by the thousands as Eric Stark of Maverick F1 Racing outpaced the field in PRM official qualifying to win his second career pole position ahead of Philip Schiap and defending world champion Alex Carella. Stark led from the rolling start, holding off the two multiple world champions behind him, lap after lap. Shiop's teammate Peter Marin had a brilliant start, overtaking Corolla and Cantando to move up to third. While round one Portimao winner Sean Torrente passed Eric Eden in lap nine to move up to sixth. But then Torrente took out two buoys, which got him disqualified as the race went under a yellow flag. Both Cantando and Anderson were out of the race, and then Corolla barrel rolled, bringing on a second yellow flag. Eric Stark held on to take his second career Grand Prix title, while Philip Schiap and Peter Marin earned a CTIC F1 Shenzhen China 2-3 on the podium. teams and 19 drivers competing in the Grand Prix of France in Evian. The team in the spotlight was CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team with three-time consecutive world champion and last year's world runner-up Philip Schiap who is currently leading the world standings. But Schiap has had a dismal record in Evian unable to finish a race in home waters and he wants to finally put an end to his misfortune here in his fourth outing. But now Evian it's another story especially for me. Uh, in three years, I don't uh, arrive to make a one Grand Prix in three races, and for sure, uh, this year we won't uh, make a, a full race. And if, if it's possible, for sure, uh, the podium. His teammate Peter Marin has had a phenomenal start to the new season, fresh off a podium in London, and French hopes rest on these two CTIC drivers. But the man of the hour is surely Eric Stark. The Swedish driver almost missed the season entirely before getting a last minute place on Cedric de Guin's French outfit, Maverick F1 Racing Team. Now, after his resounding start to finish win, he earns a place on Team Abu Dhabi. It's a veritable dream team led by 10-time world champion Guido Capellini. Stark will race alongside two other big names, former world number two and multiple Grand Prix winner Taniel Kamzi and Sean Torrente of the USA, third in the world standings going into round three. It's, a, it's an honor, you know, it has been a dream. <laughs> For me, 
since I, I don't know, like 10 years to drive for Abu Dhabi. So it's a really dream come true. Like I need to pinch my arm sometimes to see if I'm not dreaming. The heat is on now for Team Abu Dhabi's Dubai-based rivals victory team and their four-time and defending world champion Alex Carrilla and seven-time Grand Prix winner Ahmed al Hamali. They are coming off a disappointing couple of rounds so far, but Carrilla is a two-time winner at Evian and is always one of the favorites on Lac Le Mans. French team Maverick F1 Racing is led by Cedric de Green, who will be hoping for some crowd support behind him. Uh, for us, it's an important date and uh, we have to, to make a, a, a good thing in, uh, in this space for the, for the future, for, for take some sponsors with us and uh, come all around the world to be with us. Racing alongside the Green will be Norwegian Mette Bjerknes, who made a promising start to her F1 career, completing the Grand Prix of London in her maiden race. Lac Le Mans is a notoriously tough course with unpredictable winds and big rollers, making it very difficult to find the right setup and negotiate shifting conditions over a 42-lap race. Uh, the race course is, the shape of the race course is very nice, but uh, what is making demanding is the condition of the lake. Previous years we had some issues with the conditions, sometimes were rough, sometimes not so rough, wind not so windy, but it has been very challenging and of course during the race, then the pleasure boats, how they behave in, in the lake, it's the huge lake, so the waves keep coming in the race course, so you never know. The BRM official qualifying would be spread out over three sessions. The field reduced to 12 in Q1, then down to six in Q2. In Q3, those six boats would have a course of themselves with two laps each lay down the fastest time in a bit for pole position. The conditions were varied in Q1 with a big spread in times. Maverick F1 Racing Cedric de Guin and Mette Bjerknes were both around five seconds off the pace. While Sammy Celio was also struggling, still plagued with engine issues. Alex Carella and Jonas Anderson set down some good lap times and were confident enough to head back to the pontoon to wait it out. But there was big drama in the last minutes as Peter Marin shot to the top of Q1 and then Philip Roms broke into the top 12, followed by Moritz Stromoy. A shock to Alex Carella and Jonas Anderson, both of whom found themselves unable to make the Q2 cut. Also out in Q1 were Simone Schuft and Duarte Benevente. In Q2, Eric Stark set the pace, leading the field of 12. Cantando also solid in the top six, but conditions were taking their toll, and positions swung wildly with the changing winds and waves. With Carella out, victory's last hope was Ahmed al Hamali, but he struggled and didn't make the cut. Travel, travel, travel. I couldn't find a really good space. Shaw Torrente had a good outing and was back to the pontoon early, confident in his lap time. But then, in a replay of Q1, Emirates Racing brought home the goods. Stromoy and Marshalek both laying down excellent times to break the top six, while Torrente found himself bundled out, not taking heed to what happened to Carella and Anderson in Q1. Also out in Q2 were Eric Eden, Grant Trask, and Philip Roms. Some of the guys got some of the smooth water early on, and some of us didn't, but you know, that's qualifying. It is what it is. We finished it in the crash, we'll get a wet boat, so. Q3, six boats, two laps each, a battle for pole position. First out was Daniel Kamzi. He was fast, 51.46. Excellent time from the Team Abu Dhabi veteran. Francesco Cantando was out next after Al Kamzi, gunning for provisional pole position, but he was just short, 51.97. Al Kamzi keeps provisional pole. It's a nice sensation to be back in top six after a while. Today is not easy condition, and uh, I try to do my best. I would have changed prop, but we were not uh, prepared for everything, so it's okay. Follow us. Ciao. After Cantando, it was Maritz Stromoy, but she had trouble out there, well off the mark, 53.36. Philip Schiap had local support behind him, and he used it well, and he read the conditions brilliantly. What a time, 51.18, the Frenchman takes provisional pole position, thumping al Kamzi by half a second. It's a lottery, it's not normal. Uh, this condition... 
you see the, first, the two first uh, driver, the water condition is good. And after you see uh, Marit, it's completely destroyed me also. Right, but uh, I'm not happy. Bartek Marshalek had no answer to Shiap scraping through with a 52.77 that got him just ahead of his teammate Stromoy. One man left, Eric Stark. Stark won the last pole position in London. Could he make it two in a row? As Shiap waited nervously, Stark went out there full guns blazing. It was an all or nothing performance. Could he do it? He goes flying, but manages to keep the boat on the water in one piece, blazing through to the finish. 51.17. Stark beats Shiap by just one hundredth of a second. Stark has pole position. Behind Stark, Shiap finishes second, Daniel Kamzi third, Cantando with a great result in fourth, followed by Marshalek and Stromoy, Torrente down in seventh, and Alex Carella with a lot of work to do in 13th, Celio also way down in 16th. It's amazing, you know, but you know, the team is amazing, everyone works so hard, like the boat's amazing, the balance is so good, uh, I think that's why I saved that big jump. Um, so, like in the end, everything worked today. Okay, it was very, very close, but you know, if I didn't have the jump, you know, I think, uh, you know, I was on a really good jump. With the day's racing, training, preparing, and tuning over, the F1H2O family got to enjoy local hospitality as Evian welcomed drivers, crews, and their families for a fourth consecutive year. The third Grand Prix of the year was underway. 19 drivers and boats lining up on the pontoon, defending world and two-time avian champion Alex Carella, starting in 13th position. Some issue with uh, my radio and yesterday we go out from the from the Kutu and uh, okay, it would be a long race, I will push my maximum, I want to finish in the top six for sure, so I will give it all. CTIC's Peter Marin and Philip Schiap looking to keep their excellent teamwork going in home waters. The strategy is not to pass him, it's uh, to push him to, uh, to uh, catch Eric and uh, make the best result for the, all the team. Eric Stark once again will lead the field from pole position with a star-studded lineup to his right on the pontoon. Philip Schiap right beside Stark in P2, then Paniel Kamzi in third position. Torrente will be one to watch on the start. Morin right beside him in P8. And look at those two names at the very back, Jonas Anderson and Sammy Celio. Expect a lot of action from them. Starting seventh this time, and uh, that's less positions to make up than most of the time here. I think I've been starting last and second the last the last two years for other issues. So, and we passed a lot of boats. So, always on the podium. So, hopefully, we can do the same. Circuit is nice. We have sun, nice weather finally. Avian, so boom, let's go. Conditions were perfect. Calm, smooth waters, low winds, thousands watching on from the shores with bated breath for the countdown to the 275th UIM F1H2O Grand Prix. There they go, 19 boats thundering off the starting pontoon and into that starting drag race to the commitment buoy. Poor start from Alex Carella. The world champion has his work cut out for him. And what a start from Taniel Kamzi. He shoots ahead, passing Eric Stark as he hurdles towards that commitment buoy. Further back, Peter Morin going neck and neck with Eric Eden, and Eden pulls ahead of the Frenchman. The Abu Dhabi boats are first to the commitment buoy. Stark's inside lane advantage helps him keep the lead. Shiap struggling to keep up. Further back, Jonas Anderson has already passed both Maverick drivers. The Swede is now pushing on Duarte Benevente in 14th position. Sean Torrente trying to pass as many boats as he can on the start as he takes on Moritz Stromoy. Torrente on the outside trying to find the speed to pass the Norwegian Emirates racing driver. There is a battle for fourth position as Bartek Marshalek attacks his former teammate Francesco Cantando in the place performance boat he has himself designed and built. Tando holds off.
off the martial leg challenge, stays in fourth. Out in the lead, it's an Abu Dhabi 1-2 leading the race. Stark on the inside, Al Kamzi on the outside. Stark with the edge, Shiop trying to keep up in third. Eric Eden is on the warpath. He is gunning it out there as he passes Moritz Stromoy and then takes on Sean Torrente in sixth. But Marin strikes back, zooming past Stromoy on the outside, then also takes Eden, leaving the Sweden as spray as he reclaims the positions he lost earlier. Back out in the lead, the two Abu Dhabi boats are barely a boat's length apart. Al Kamzi just behind Stark. Stark goes fast into the turn. Al Kamzi cuts in right on Stark's tail. Stark holds on to his lead and handles the pressure well from Al Kamzi. Al Kamzi showing no mercy to his new teammate Stark. Eric Stark deftly maneuvers to stay ahead. Al Kamzi keeps up the pressure. Meanwhile, Sean Torrente is gaining on Bartek Marshall. Torrente cuts in on the inside. Marshall gives Torrente the gap he was looking for, and that's all she wrote. Torrente overhauls the Polish driver and sets his sights on Contando. In lap two, Eric Stark opens his lead over Al Kamzi. Philip Schiap in third, followed by Contando. You can see some big rollers from a passing boat heading into that turn. Schiap gets air, goes long, but he keeps it going. Alex Carrilla in 13th, finally starting to build some momentum as he passes Roms to move up a spot. The going's been tough for Corella so far, but there's still 40 laps in the race, and the world champion knows he has time on his side. Corella in 12th, next sets his sights on Grant Trask of F1 Atlantic team, the Australian driver on the inside, keeping one eye on the hard-charging Italian behind him. Up in third, Philip Schiap in trouble as Cantando passes the Frenchman to move into third. The Schiap misfortune in Evian continues as Schiap pulls into the pontoon and his crew come rushing in for the world standings leader. He's got a broken prop. The CTIC crew fix the prop and Schiap is back in the race, but he's now dead last and three laps behind the lead boats, but at least he's still racing. Back to the action. Jonas Anderson has passed Philip Roms and is now zeroing in on Alex Corella in 12th. A three-way battle unfolds between Grant Trask, Corella, and Anderson for 11th position. As Anderson builds pace in pursuit, Corella speeds in on the outside to overtake Grant Trask on the turn. Corella beats the Aussie, who now has to worry about Anderson. Anderson finds a gap there on the inside as both Corella and Trask go wide. Can Anderson zip through and beat both in one fell swoop? He does it. Jonas Anderson is up in 10th position. Eight positions up from where he started. The Swede is now at least in the points and looking to continue his upward graph as Corella gives chase. But Anderson is just too fast for Corella. The Swede flies away as the blue victory Baba boat tries to keep up. Philip Roms has been pushed back to 13th. He's now attacking Grant Trask on the outside, but he loses control and barrel rolls on lap eight. That's a yellow flag. More bad news for Mad Croc Baba team as Sammy Celio is also out of the race under the yellow flag. Start for the last position. Then I didn't have any punch in the engine. Then I, uh, there was a big wave and jumped me. Uh, throw me in the yellow boy and so I destroy one turn boy starting uh, driving in that position knowing that you have one lap uh, more than the others there was no sense so first time in my career I decided to come uh, away from the race court by my own willing so it's a big very sad moment the green flag goes back up as the race restarts on lap 11 Stark is just ahead of Alcamzi, behind them Cantando just in front of Torrente, and in fifth is Peter Marin keeping French hopes alive in Evian. Alex Carrilla has a brilliant restart as he moves past Moritz Stromoy and then goes neck and neck with Jonas Anderson, passing the Swede as well as he then sets his sights on Bartek Marshalek and Ahmed Al Hamali. But Jonas Anderson is not backing down. He finds the speed on the outside to claw his way back up, passes Stromoy, then takes Corella, and finally overhauls Marshalek, moving up into eighth. Up in the lead, three of four boats, or Abu Dhabi boats. Francesco Cantando, the only obstacle in the way of a potential Team Abu Dhabi. One, two, three. <laughs> in 
fifth. Peter Marin sees Eric Eden move up on him as the young Swede gets past the Frenchman who is bumped down to sixth. Behind Peter Marin in seventh is Ahmed Al Hamili. Then Anderson eighth. Another French driver, Cedric de Guin, is in 12th. Grant Trask 13th. His teammate Benevente in 14th. And in last position is Philip Schiap, three laps behind the lead boats. Peter Marin's slide continues as he's first passed by Al Hamili on lap 14. And then Jonas Anderson. Marin finding himself down in eighth. Alex Carella is locked in a drag race with Bartek Marsalek, the number one victory boat right on the Polish driver's tail. Corella hugs that inside line tight and he gets past Marsalek on lap 15 as he then starts cutting the gap with Peter Marin. The battle for third heats up as Torrente tries to catch Contando with Eric Eden right behind them, also looking for a way up. Eden looking to sneak through against Torrente, but Torrente shuts him out. Marshalek chases Corella down the long straightaway and Corella goes over. Lap 24, Corella crashes out as the Osprey rescue team pull up on the scene. There it is on the replay. Corella catches a wave and goes flying, flips in the air. That's a huge crash as Corella injures his leg and is tended to back on shore. Bad luck for the defending champion, the second crash in a row. The race once again under a yellow flag as the field bunches up. And it's back on in lap 31, just 11 laps left in the race. Jonas Anderson puts the pressure on Ahmed Al Hamli and passes the victory driver on his outside as he then finds himself behind Team Sweden teammate Eric Eden. No change with the two lead, but Stark on his guard has a good restart and holds Al Kamzi off in second. Behind them, Torrente sees his chance to pass Cantando. The two do battle. Torrente has the speed. Cantando holds tight on the inside line. But Torrente does it. Torrente has moved past the Italian. And it's now a Team Abu Dhabi triumvirate leading the field. But Cantando has no time to lick his wounds as he has the two red Team Sweden boats barreling down behind him. And Eric Eden swoops in on the inside of Contando. Eden's incredible surge continues. The Team Sweden driver moves up into fourth position. Moritz Stromoy in ninth, just ahead of Cedric de Guin of Maverick Racing, who was overtaken by Marshallek briefly before de Guin strikes back and reclaims his top 10 position, staying in the points for Maverick. Lap 34, just eight laps left in the race. Can Eric Stark hold on to make it two Grand Prix titles in a row? Can Abu Dhabi take all three podium steps? What a result that would be for Guido Capellini's outfit. Stark, Alcamzi, and Torrente all on track for the podium. Behind them is young Eric Eden, who's been going head to head with the top names of F1H2O this year, on track for a fourth place finish. The drama builds behind the Abu Dhabi boats as Peter Morin regains his speed and momentum, first passing Jonas Anderson and then Ahmed Al Hamili to move up to sixth as he then gives chase to Francesco Cantando in fifth. As the laps wind down, there is no change in positions. The Abu Dhabi juggernaut heads for a complete dominance of this race. This would be an unprecedented event in F1 history. And there it is, Stark wins his third career and second consecutive Grand Prix here in Evian. Daniel Kamsi runner-up and Torrente completing a historic Team Abu Dhabi 1-2-3 shutout on Lac Le Mans. Stark wins it for his new team on his first race. What a success story for Team Abu Dhabi. Eric Eden completes a brilliant race for a well-deserved fourth place result. Peter Marin ends up fifth for CTIC, and then Al Hamley and Digween all getting points in the top 10. Poor Cantando was in fourth and retired on the final lap. Shiap never recovered from the prop change, but at least finished the race in Evian for the first time. Really one of my best drives ever. It was just a, just a great day. Um, my team kept believing in me. They just kept trying to pick me up. I'm very happy today. I finished the second, almost close to first, but uh, I keep saving the boat. Finish the second, get some points for next race. Thank you. That result. Shoots Team Abu Dhabi 38 points 
clear atop the world team standings. CTIC up in second, boosted by Marin's fifth place result. Maverick is third and victory fourth. And that second win in a row for Stark sees the Swede take the lead in the overall championship standings. Two points clear of his teammate Daniel Kamzi in second. And yet another teammate Torrente in third as Abu Dhabi dominates the season. Shiap still in fourth on 27 points with his teammate Morin just a point behind him in fifth. Defending world champion Corella's woes continue as he drops to eighth. Thanks to Saleh and Guido Abu Dhabi you know, believing in me and I think, uh, to be honest, everyone was run exactly the same boats. So they were on the copy of everyone's propellers and we had the same engine. So it was, it was a really cool day to be one, two, three. That brings to a close the Grand Prix of France in Evian as the flag passes to China. See you in Xiangyang for round four of the 2018 UIM F1H2O World Championship.